So I'm going to put it here, I'm going to transfer it, and then I'm going to maybe add some things to the edge. And I was thinking maybe do a square in the middle, but I'll see. Okay, so let's, uh, the next step is we're going to find the middle. This is 12 inches, so I was doing a little, little, little tick mark here for six. Tick mark at six, same down here. Line up your ruler. Draw your line down quick. There we go. And we'll do the same thing here. So we can have our uh, middle and the line going up and down so that way we can transfer in the exact middle. There we go. Okay. I tape it down first and then I slip the transfer paper underneath. You can take your little diamonds here and line it up. Oh, I like it. All right. It's going to go like this. That'll hold it. Transfer paper is here. I'm just craft paper, graphite paper. I just got this, um, I think it was at Michael's. Dark side down. Put this underneath. I don't want it to move. I'm just going to do this bottom part. I'll show you a little bit and then I'll move on from there. Okay. So, I want everything to line up nice. So, this is what we'll start from the middle. Let's do that. So, this is what happens. You see, your lines are there. Wonderful. Looks looking good. All right, I'm going to transfer it and then we'll get started uh, picking our colors. Um, what I did, uh, I went on to Google and I typed in my area, McHenry County, and I uh, typed in Barn Quilt Trails. A popped, uh, we do have a Barn Quilt Trail in here in McHenry, um, McHenry County. So what that is, is you, uh, farms, uh, farmers in the area have made their own barn quilt paintings and put them on their barns and they registered in the barn quilt trail. So you could drive your car to uh, the farms and see their barn quilt. It's really cool. I did that and it was really enjoyable. And I went to Woodstock, actually. I teach um, at Creative Arts in Crystal Lake. And then I, I, was, I went to Woodstock and I was taking pictures and the farmer and one of the farmers in Woodstock came out and I told him what I was doing. I was making a video for my students, and he's brought me into his barn and showed me all his other... He he changes his barn quilts out every few weeks, and he really enjoys making them. And the people in the community like to look at it, too. His barn is on um, Queen Anne's Road and Bow Valley Road. It's a Christmas tree farm. A uh, little, little one, really cute. They have a beautiful barn, meticulous barn. So anyway, he was very nice and uh, if you want to go see his barn quilts, they're just beautiful. And he was very uh, enjoyable to talk to. So, okay, I'm going to finish doing this and I'll get my paints together. Okay, I'm going to tape off the middle. I chose some colors. I'm going to do a dark blue, dark blue, light blue, dark blue, light blue, so a pattern. And I keep going. So let's mark it up, mask it off so we get a nice, neat edge. So I'm only going to do the dark blue ones, I think, first. Let's do those first. Let's do a couple and show you what I'm doing. So then I will finish it up. There we go. Beautiful. Nice and neat and tidy. That's what I want. So now I'm going to do the dark here. 
You could use paintbrushes, you could use those sponges that are, you know, on a stick that you can get at the craft stores that would work great too. So, try to get it smoothish. So these, you could put these, when you get them done, you can put them in your garden, you can put them on your fence or your shed, um, in your bedroom, whatever. Um, I'm doing mine on wood, um, but I keep it small so it's not so heavy. I mean, this could go on my front porch, maybe. I don't know, we'll see. We'll see. I'm gonna smooth it out so it's not clunky. If your paint starts to get too thick, you can add a bit of water to it. Okay, there's that one. Okay, so I have all the dark sections done. I'm going to lift the last tape. I'm not waiting a long time in for it to dry, so it's up to you how if you want to do that. But I want to get onto the next color. So I'm going to use a lighter version of blue. Um, I wanted a bit of a contrast, but not too much. So we'll see what happens and take a look at that. So. So there we are now. I'll show you the color I'm gonna use. You know, it's seeping under a little bit, but I'm not overly concerned about it. It gives it a little more of a rustic look, which I like, so that'll do. Okay, so there's that. Okay, so this is the second color. I'm gonna lift up. Ooh, that looks pretty, I like it. ones. Oops. There we go. Looking good. So when you make these colors, um, make enough, you know, mix up enough because there's nothing worse than trying to match the color exactly when, you, when you're trying to keep things, um, you know, the same. So, okay, let's go on to the another one. I started taping it off and I wrote L light dark light dark and I just put a little L D because I didn't want to get confused in the beginning of what colors goes where so yeah so when I'm taping this down I'm ever so slightly moving it overlapping it onto the darker blue so the light blue will uh, almost like go on top of the one below so there's not the wood you don't see the wood you know like a line of wood color you can always go back if you have to and you know tidy up things but better just to get it done right the first time all right there's that let's go back to our this color and um when i'm doing my strokes all of them i'm stroking out just to keep it nice and I'm not just going, ch -ch -ch. I'm trying to have a nice, even the texture, that's just something I like to do. So keep your textures interesting too. I'm just using acrylic paint. You could use house paint if you want, anything you have at home. And uh, usually what I do is I just line the paints up next to each other and I, I, I see if I like the way they look next to each other. Okay, so there's that tape off some more. Let's see. I'm going to let that dry for a few seconds and then I will continue on and finish that. Then it's time to choose the next color. Okay, so I'm going to do the diamonds. I tape them all off. When you do your tape, you know, pull it taut so it stays nice and straight and lay it on there. Okay, so I think I'm going to use this pink. We'll see what it looks like. Hopefully it'll look good. Um, I'm going to go up and down, I think, here oh, okay, with my paint. I want your paints to be the same tone, pretty much. Yeah, that looks good. I think I'm going to like it. I can see my pencil line through there a little bit, so I might want to do another layer of paint once it dries a little bit as you can see through it. Some paint, some colors are just that way. All right, I think I'm gonna go this way with my strokes here, kind of, yep. Because here I did strokes like that, here I did strokes like that, so I'm gonna go along and then 
follow that same pattern that I was doing with my texture. Yeah, I'm definitely going to have to do another layer. Some paints are transparent, some are not. This one happens to be. If I would have added a bit of white to this, that would have made it more opaque. But then it would, of course, lighten the color. If I have to do that, I will. Okay, I'm going to go match the um, texture that the, pat, the stroke from there. Now acrylics, they start to dry and sometimes clump up, so I wouldn't make all my colors first. I would, you know, do your sections and then once one section is done, you're going to go on to your next color, then make your color. You can make your choices and choose, but yeah. All right, there's that. Oops, that looks like an angle a little bit. Straighten that out. So I did the pink, um, and it was see-through, and so I added a bit of lighter pink. This is just craft paint too, by the way. Some of it is like that, some of it I'm using regular acrylics. So it was too see-through, so I added some of this lighter pink to the darker pink to the magenta, and it, um, I did two more layers, so that uh, seems to make to look better. So now I'm lifting this up, and I think I'm going to go to the next square, and I might use like a light blue. I want to pull it all together, and then maybe out here I might use the dark blue again, or out here. So we'll just, I'm doing one step at a time and making my decisions as I go. Some of this has seeped through, but I'm not really concerned about it. Um, once it's all done, I'm going to take an overall look and decide, do I want to go back and touch up, you know, that lifted up some of the wood. We'll see if I, I want to or not. It might not be necessary, but we'll, we'll see. I'm going to look at it in the big picture. This is looking good. See? Looking good. All right, I'm enjoying that. So now I think I'm going to go to my next color. I might do this light blue. I want to go in there with the light blue, I believe. So I'm going to tape it off. So try when you're taping this to tape off as much as you can at once. Um, I'm going to just go out here and tape the whole outside square because the pink is still drying a little bit. So I'll at least get started on this or maybe I'll just paint this. Yeah, let's do that. So I can either do this whole square one color, like maybe, like I said, bring that out, um, or I can do it in sections, you know, to the, to the edge here, I can do one color. Maybe I can do the dark blue here and the light blue here, dark blue, light blue, but I think I might wanna just do the one outline and then um, and then one outline out here and then maybe in here I can do like uh, different colors but we'll see I think in here I'm gonna do a lighter blue this light blue here but I'm just gonna get this taped down and while the insides drying I'm going to paint this square here you always push it down Donna Sue Grover from Ohio in 2001 started these barn quilt trails. Her mom, Maxine, um, was a quilter and uh, she wanted to honor her mother by making a barn quilt painting to hang on their barn. And then the people in their community um, decided they loved that idea and so they started it too. So that's how the trail, the barn quilt trail, trails began. And then, you know, way back when, you know, um, 100 years ago or more, uh, people would just paint, instead of painting their whole barn, um, they didn't have paint for that. They would just paint, they would make paintings like this and make art like this. Um, and maybe not the quilt art, but they would uh, make paintings and they would hang it in their barn and that's how they would decorate it that way. So decorating barns goes way back. So I'm going to get that going. I'm going to make my decisions on colors. And so we've got this square. I think I'm going to do the light blue. 
and then a square outside of it. I'm going to have to make a decision. So let me think about that. And I'm going. What I do is I pick it up on my paint, my paintbrush, and I put it next to it to see do I like that or not. That's how I work it. Okay. Okay. The blue squares are taped off. We're going to give this light blue a try. And I might add a touch of that dark. I don't know. I'm going to leave it. Let's see. Let's get some light in here. Brighten this thing up. Sometimes you need that. You know. You need to brighten it up. The lights, whether it's white or a light color, makes the darks pop sometimes, you know, and then maybe if I even put a black, maybe border, that might even help too. So we're just gonna do this and see how it looks. Now I'm just going up and down with my strokes here to keep the squares consistent. Come up with your own plan see what you think is best. Now this is very see-through too, but it doesn't matter really because there are, um, we don't have any pencil lines, marks underneath it. All right, now that's going to have to dry. And it's hard to tell what color you want to use while we have some uh, red tape there. So the best thing to do is wait for that to dry, uh, lift it up, and then take an overall look. And if this is all to do with patterns, patterns, and remember that this is a quilt, a quilt painting. So quilts are done in sections with squares of, um, or you know, shapes or diamonds or whatever of material. So we're mimicking that with our painting. So um, you know, you have to think. This would be a square with maybe another, you know, something sewn onto it. So that that's what we're our, um, what we're trying to achieve here. So, okay, I'm going to wash my paintbrush and we're going to choose our next color. So I took the tape off of the light blue and the light blue was kind of watery-ish. So um, it seeped through a little bit, not a problem. So I think while I'm waiting, I chose red for these accents. So I think I'm going to try to tidy that blue up while I'm waiting for the red to dry. Since I already have that blue mixed up, it's starting to dry out though, so I'm do want to have to make that again. So I'm going to try, see what I can do. But, you know, I can't really do it by hand. If you don't tape it, it's not going to be a nice, it's not going to be a nice line. Does that be perfect? Just want it to stay neat and tidy a little bit. See, a little bit, not terrible. Oh, I need a paintbrush. So I taped off the edges. I'm going to do a nice light blue border. There's the same light blue as that. Now I'm going to try to pull the blues together on the outside there to pull it all together. Um, so I'm going to use this light blue to match this, and I'm going to use these two also on the outside to. And that should that should give it nice consistency but let's first I'm going to get this done take the tape off and do an overall look and make my decision then but that's my plan right now and we'll see if it works so I'm going to finish this I had to make more color because my acrylics dried so uh, you can easily work on this of course and go away from it and come back another day or in an hour or two. You can easily start and stop and come back. And um, if you get everything done, take all your tape off, stand back and look at it and decide if you want to add more sections, you can easily do that too. So go online and um, you can look at, just type in um, barn quilt art and you can look at all kinds of beautiful artwork and um, I do that all the time to you know check this out and see what it's all about and um, it helps you to design your own but make it your own and you don't have to just use colors straight out of the bottle I mixed a lot of my colors I took the bottles and then um, I mixed these two together a little bit you know to pull them together into each other the colors so that's what I did there and then when you're done with this whole thing, you could, um, you know, put a wire hanger on it and hang it on your front porch or um, in your room. You can do this on canvas 
You can do this on a uh, thick cardboard. Um, I chose to do mine on wood and I like this size. I like the square, but you know, play with it and have fun. Okay, so I'm going to let this dry and then I'm going to go back in and again, I'm going to start, I'm going to incorporate these two blues somehow on the outside, whether it's just another two more, two more stripes or do, um, I don't know, I'm not sure. We're gonna to have to see. I added yellow here, a light yellow. I wanted to brighten it up a bit. So make sure you get your corners and everything because now you're overlapping the colors from before. So, and um, I did go back in here. You see how fuzzy it is here? That blue seeped. So I went and did the same thing here. So I taped um, off the blue and then I went back in with my dark blue and tidied it up, which I'll probably do with that too. So I'm going to let this dry and then lift that up and decide if I want to do sections of blue or add another, you know, something, but we'll see. So I wanna, at this point, I like to, after I like to lean it up on something and get back from it and look at the big picture. So um, it's hard to tell right now, but we'll see what happens. Okay, so I pulled that other blue, the medium blue on the outside, and let's see how it looks. And if I choose later to add something on the corners, I will, but right now, I just wanna see what this looks like. So there are other teachers who do other videos. Um, so we'll look at uh, Creative Arts you know, online, Creative Arts, and there's also a online oops, art shows of Fridays of our students' work. So students, if you're watching, send me some work or I'm going to just send the work that I have of yours. And uh, it was really enjoyable to watch. We saw the first one, May 1st, 2020. It was beautiful. Susan did a great job. We have um, great work from our, one of our, stu uh, our wonderful students. Okay, so it did get a bit fuzzy on the edges. So when you think about it, one, are you really gonna be looking at it up that close, but two, um, yeah, I think I probably will go back in and, and tidy it up. 